Welcome back to Good Night. This next segment is going to be, you know, probably seen a lot in the news lately. Governor Baker last week banned vaping sales in the state of Massachusetts in a total ban. And I think it came as a surprise to a lot of uh, vape sh shop owners. And to talk about it, we have two owners from Vape Daddies here tonight. David and Stacy are joining us here on Good Night. Let's talk a little bit about Governor Baker's ban on vaping. Now, you own a vape shop. We own four vape we own shops. Four, vape four vape shops that essentially now are, closed. are they out of business? They're, they're closed. They're closed. Right. And For the next four months. Right, which basically means they're out of business. Okay. We're planning on closing three of them and possibly trying to keep one open and see what happens at the end of four months. But we're not uh, really <clears throat> optimistic that much is going to change in four months. Okay. Are you being told anything by the state what's going to change or possibly what they're investigating? No, I mean, they've <clears throat> basically, our understanding is given that there have been, and I don't know what the number is across the country, but mm -hmm. I think it's 34 states and, and 500 plus cases of individuals suffering um, acute respiratory problems, mm -hmm. uh, the, I believe the governor and his health department decided that uh, they did not want to take any chances not, not knowing what definitively is causing these people to go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, the CDC reported yesterday 77% of the cases of the nine folks that have died, uh, there's for 77% of those cases, so what's that? I don't know, seven cases, yeah, six and a half it's cases? It's actually 77% of all of the illnesses that okay. have been diagnosed so far okay. have been positively um, tied to people who are vaping tainted marijuana cartridges. THC cartridges. There's no evidence yet that links any of the illnesses to vaping nicotine products. Not, there's not one shred of evidence that links it right okay. now. Okay. Um, you really have two things going on, two big situations that are su happening simultaneously. And the first is there's been growing concern about the epidemic of teen vaping. Mm -hmm. And we share that concern. We're a 21 plus store, and between us, David and I have eight children. Um, and so we obviously are not, we obviously don't think anybody who's not an, a smoker, an ex-smoker over the age of 21 should be vaping. Okay. So there's that situation. And as a response to the epidemic of teen vaping, many politicians have recommended banning flavors. Mm -hmm. That, ban that the recommendation is based on the premise that children who might otherwise not try smoking would be more likely to try vaping because it's flavor, it's flavor and it tastes good. Mm -hmm. And we totally understand that. Um, the other situation is these pulmonary illnesses that have cropped up recently and the deaths, which are oh, tragic. horrible, tragic. Sure. Um, but increasingly, that's appearing to be linked to vaping THC, black market THC cartridges. Right, so they're not, <clears throat> these cartridges were not purchased in a dispensary for those states that sell them legally. Um, in the case of Massachusetts, you know, you can buy recreational marijuana. Mm -hmm. You, many people, until marijuana went legal, were simply you know, seeing a doctor, getting uh, legal approval, and then using marijuana products uh, to help them with pain, uh, to sp spur on appetite, etc. cetera. Um, and these cartridges, these aren't the cartridges that people are getting sick from. The, the cartridges from dispensaries go through elaborate testing. They know where the marijuana was grown. They know who processed it. There are a lot of numbers, et cetera. Unfortunately, people buy off the black market mm -hmm. 
And apparently these cartridges were thickened they, the, with, the, vitamin e. with vitamin E. The liquid didn't match the look of a THC cartridge that was uh, produced correctly. So the black market said, well, let's just thicken it with, uh, mm -hmm. how's vitamin E? Well, vitamin E is great for topical application and for ingestion. Uh, anyone in the know knows vitamin E is an oil, mm -hmm. and that will give you pneumonia pretty quick. You know, well, it's not water soluble, so it messes your lungs up. And then the complications set in from there. And right. that appears to be what the majority of these cases are. Mm -hmm. So our concern is. Uh, our well, concern is, is that the general public has equated the pulmonary illnesses with, with vaping. vaping. Mm -hmm. And, and the that, that, and, and, and that <clears throat> leads people to believe that vaping is a bad thing. Yeah, and I mean the we, we are here to say that it is vape, if you are an adult smoker who has tried the gum and to, the patch the gum and, and the patches and had no success, you might want to try vaping. Because it's twice as effective as any of the FDA approved cessation devices, cessation devices mm -hmm. on the market right. now. And you can argue numbers either way. Um, you can say, well, we still don't know that vaping is completely safe. And the flip what side we is, do know is that it's 95% safer than smoking. Right, and I like okay. to say 95% less dangerous. Right. What we do know, and I thought you were gonna say this, is 480,000 Americans die every year from smoking-related illness. Mm -hmm. So during the time that these unfortunate 500 or so people have gotten sick, I think the number is 58,000 Americans have died. Mm -hmm. 500 ill, okay. 58,000 Americans have died. Why are they not banning cigarettes? I, you know, I, I think it's a fair question. It's, it's a very fair question. Because what I'm excited, because we talked a little bit about offline about my public health background, and to hear two responsible business owners come into our studio and say, listen, we don't support under 21 smoking. That's I think, is a very important statement to hear from a, a business owner. Absolutely. So it is, I was talking to people even tonight in anticipation <clears throat> of this video. This isn't about the under 21 because nobody should be buying Correct. vape product in any of your stores Correct. under 21. This is legal, hopefully semi-intelligent people coming right. into your store making life choices. Right. If I go to McDonald's and eat McDonald's late at night is, you know, the, that's the that's food a police well. are not showing up and slapping your hand. So to, to, to say that the kids, uh, no vape shop should be selling to kids anyway, no. period, in the story. And yeah. you guys have already said and, it tonight. So I think it's, it's an interesting point. It's our estimation. I mean, we, look, we, we had four stores. Mm -hmm. We trained our employees who went through rigorous training, and they signed paperwork that said, if you sell to underage, if you fail to card to 27, if you vape in the store, any of these offenses, okay, you're fired that day. And they all agreed to it, and we got one citation in six years from the town of Framingham. Okay. And, and the individual, for... get this one, actually it wasn't from Framingham, it was a federal agent who came in because the municipalities check us, mm -hmm. shop us quarterly, the state shops us quarterly, and the Fed shop us quarterly. Okay, that, that's their right, and you, we agreed to it. And um, Fed came in, and the guy was 25 years old. Well, we didn't card him. He, he should have been carded because mm -hmm. he looked less than 27. Right. We fired the guy. Right. And I right. said to him, I'm sorry to do this, but if I let you go, there's no teeth in our rules mm -hmm. and we're gonna have more problems. And you know what, this is just business. I mean, right. whether I agree with the age thing or not, it's the law. Right. So I think we that did a really good job over the years, and our guys know it. You know, don't mess with Stacy and David because I don't want to lose my job. And I think many of the vape stores honored those rules and made sure to abide by them. And you know, 
not to pick on convenience stores and gas stations, mm -hmm. but we really treated the vape as a smoking cessation device. If you go into the average convenience store, which has 3,000 products on its shelf, right. do you think that the harried uh, salesman behind the counter knows anything about vapes? Probably the same amount as they know about snuff and Marlboro. Right. They, they, you know, how can they know about so all this stuff? So you guys are the experts. We are the right. experts. Right. We, we are, are the experts. experts. And we would talk people out of vaping. Our guys were trained. If you came in, and, John, and you said, I'm thinking about vaping, really? Okay, why? What are you, what are you trying to achieve? Mm -hmm. I've tried the gum, the patch, Chantix. I can't quit. I've tried it. Maybe you want to try vaping. Can we ask you a bunch of questions? We, I've spent an hour with people and to get also, them to that point. Right. But if you come in and you say, I don't know, it just looks like fun. What do you mean? You, you don't smoke cigarettes. No. You're not addicted to nicotine. No. Like, no, no, no. We, you don't want to buy this. Right. We've talked so many people out of you know, heavy-duty nicotine systems like the Juul. You don't want a Juul. You don't want you to smoke, be addicted to nicotine. You smoke one or two cigarettes a month when you go to a party. You start with the Juul, you are going to be severely addicted. And boy, you're going to find out how hard nicotine addiction hits so and the, how hard it is to stop. Mm -hmm. The thing that I think a lot of people don't realize about the Juul is that part of what made it so unique is that they developed a new way of processing the liquid mm -hmm. so right. they could deliver much higher levels of nicotine than most of the products that were yeah, sold at the in, time. Th this is, a, this is a dinner lady lemon tart in an open system. Okay. okay, So I refill this when I want. It has three milligrams of nicotine in it. The, the lowest level, if I had a jewel here, the lowest level pod, closed pod you can get, is 30 milligrams. So 10 times as strong. It's stronger. 10, 10 times time. stronger, and their highest level is 50 milligrams. So while this produces a, a gigantic flavorful hit, the Juul produces a sm much smaller hit, but a much more heavy hitting hit. Mm -hmm. But they figured out, to Stacy's point, they figured out how to uh, smooth out that hit. So it doesn't make you cough. You, you can hit a Juul at 50 and it won't make you cough. Mm. And, and so you're thinking, wow, this is great. You know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a kid, I'm having a drink, at a, having a beer at a party, and this will just add to my buzz. And I think that the stealthy nature of the device and the fact that if you're vaping mango, who's going to think you're smoking? Like your parents would never know you're smoking. Right. Cause yeah. The, 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 big, the biggest, um, the end result of Governor Baker's ban is really going to be to push people to, bl to the black market. I was going to bring that point up. So, yeah. and, and, and or, also, ba or back I'm to smoking. Back to, and also, I it's am crazy. extremely interested in, I really want to learn what happens to the sale of cigarettes post 9-23. Mm -hmm. 24. Be 24? <laughs> 23, 24, 24 yeah. right. Uh, because... I can tell you right uh, now. I'm, I want to see the numbers too. They've skyrocketed. We took our, our, our headquarters as our Newton store. And well, let, let me set the yeah. table here just a little Go, bit. Go we're, right we're, ahead. we're speaking with Dave and Stacy, the owners of Vape Dad. You have four stores. And because we're on the World Wide Web, tell us where your four stores were. Well, we had a store in Norwood. Was our Norwood, second, Massachusetts. Norwood, Mass., our, our, our second largest store. And the health department decided that um, they wanted to ban flavors. Okay. We we said, you're kidding, and they went ahead and ban all flavors or just all, all flavors. No, 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 all no, no, flavors. All flavors. Okay. Interesting. So we and many of the municipalities in Massachusetts have yeah. banned flavors. flavors. 160 municipalities, to our count, have banned flavors. Okay. Butterscotch. But the, the vast majority of them have excluded vape, vape stores, stores from Why? the ban. Because they've been shopping these stores. They know they don't sell to underage. And they've, you know, and customers have talked to them and said, I've, I've never felt better now that I'm off of cigarettes. Mm -hmm. And so Only three of those 160 have decided 
not to exclude those stores. And Norwood was one. So when we found out, we said to the, the chairman, we'd like to come in and meet with you. No, I've made my decision. Hmm. She would not see us. So we, were, know, thinking, the, the we were thinking, we were thinking, okay, it. well, we can't. Tell them, tell them, we had 140 flavors at that point. Right. 140, and they start relatively high in nicotine, but they all go down to zero. Mm -hmm. Why? So that you can come in, John, if you were smoking a pack of Marlboro Reds a day, we would test you out on different levels and say, look, we'd like to see you start on the higher end, vape it for a bit, work your way down, 24, 18, 12 milligrams, 6, 3, 0. Mm -hmm. Once you get down to zero, you're no longer addicted. Right. You might be psychologically addicted to hand to mouth, Routine. Yeah. physiologically right. you're not. So we, you know, um, we're, we're a different sort of operation. Norwood didn't see it our way, and we ended up selling, this is ironic, our license to a smoke shop. Hmm. And no, because two weeks if, ago. If we had closed it, 9-11, you know, on 9-11 we closed, and if we had sold that license, or if we had, if we had just closed, the mm -hmm. license would have disappeared forever. Right. So we were approached by a couple businessmen who said, we want to open up a smoke shop, you know, and we did the deal. So and Nor was close. the irony is that the vape shop is replaced by, by a smoke, smoke shop. shop. Selling cigarettes. So a couple questions, because we never have enough time here on Good Night. Uh, the four-month ban is in place by Governor Charlie Baker. But the simple question, I don't think you see a lot in the media. Your rents still do, right? You still have a lease. You still got to pay your rent, right? What right. happens to your inventory? What's the shelf life of vape? Excellent question. Yeah. First of all, we have leases on our stores. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we have employees. We had... Eight we, employees, right. we've let go seven, seven of them. Um, With the thought caveat that maybe if things maybe work out in four months, you can come back? Maybe? Of course. Okay. Yes. I, yeah. I mean, honestly, I think the federal government has completely boggled the, this whole situation with the PMT, pro, the PTMT, whatever. But, but I guess my naive question to you, and I'm not asking you to put them on the spot, it'll be John Featherston's word. Jewel did you guys no favor. Jewel well, is the you problem. Are, Jewel is Jewel that's the understatement Jewel okay. of the century. this industry. <laughs> they are the I'm not often they, understated, so I mean, I think they, they, they are, did you guys they the, are they the ultimate the disruptor. Right. Because had they not entered the market, you would not have had a teenage epidemic of vaping. Right. Okay. 100%. And if you hadn't had a teenage epidemic of vaping, nobody would have really been looking at vaping. And I mean, you might still have had the problem with tainted THC cartridges. That's, you know, that's just underground. That's people who want to sell drugs and not pay sales tax, not pay anything, and sell to anybody who will buy them. But the thing is, is that what Governor Baker did was not only ban the flavors, he banned all vaping liquid and all vape devices. Right. Mm -hmm. So the hardware. So our sales pretty much were... 60% juices, 40% hardware, and all the accessories that you need to be a vapor. Right. And of the juices, 90% of the, and these were all sold to 21 plus, 90% of the juices were flavored juices. Right. Well, let's talk about that because we're running out a little bit of time here. Sure. When people hear the word black market, right. they get something in their head. And I'll say it as the old man here. Uh, where are the kids getting this on the black market? Is this, I mean, well, is this the, Amazon? Is I this think eBay? The, is this the, the dealer down the street? Well, no, the, what is the if black they were market? buying them off of Amazon, I mean, you can't sell THC. No, it's the Amazon. dealer down the street. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a dealer okay. down yeah, the street. It's, it's somebody who says, hey, it's not that hard to take marijuana flour and add chemicals, boil it down, synthesize it, and wow, a capsule that I can sell to you for 140 bucks. It's a tank. Basically, it's a really skinny tank that fits on a battery. There you go. You're ready. You're ready to get high. So, what are you guys going to do for the next 
th three months and three weeks. Well, what, what we, were, we were actually thinking about maybe getting jobs here at WACA. <laughs> <laughs> we're always looking for good help. <laughs> we're always looking for good help. No, but yeah. seriously, I mean, you've, no, you've well, got to pay a bill. Is, and you've got, I well, would imagine, it a is substantial more, amount of money invested in your company. We're facing an existential crisis. crisis. I just um, turned 60. I'm a little bit over. And we fortunately, we don't have debt. Never did. We don't have debt in the company. We do have probably $80,000 worth of inventory. That we can't sell. And, and what's the shelf life on that? I don't think we answered that. Hardware is, hardware is the, irrelevant, except that the technology, the technology is going to continue to change. So four so months the, from now, people are going to Our hardware is not going to be, okay. like 80% of it is going to be no longer. Old school. Yeah, it's going to be old school. All right, we're getting the wrap up here, but give us your closing thoughts on the, on the controversy. Mm, that's a tough one. Uh, you know, uh, I'm hoping there are a number of lawsuits out there, but uh, one of the big vaping associations, the American Vaping Association and Vaping Technology Association, sued the governor of New York, tried to get an injunction that was filed on the 25th that was turned down yesterday or today. I think the big takeaway is that the people who are getting hurt the most, are forget the, the owners and the employees, right. It's, it is honestly it's, it's the vapors. all of the hundreds and of thousands of ex-smokers who had happily kicked the habit, kicked the habit and were vaping. Mm -hmm. I've, I've spoken to 20, no less than 25 people in the last week who were said, dude, I bought a pack, I'm yeah. smoking. Like it's so easy. Going back to regular oh, they already combustible back. The cigarettes. The next day I had people calling me. Right. I spoke to five people on Wednesday who were like, I'm calling you, I just, I, I started smoking again. And if the black market for e-liquid happens, and I said this on Channel 5 or Channel 7, I said, now the governor is going to see the death toll take off like crazy because they're going to be making bathtub e-liquid and you have no idea what's in it. Now it's being manufactured by big firms with clean rooms, with specific. Who have to have the ingredient listing. Yeah, I mean, now to it's, it's going to be like bathtub gin. Well, David and Stacy from Vape Daddies, thanks for coming in and joining. Just for clarity for the view and audience, we did reach out to the governor's office and invited well, him on tonight. Uh, we did not get a response that's back, too but uh, bad. we did get. So I don't think the story is far from over, so hopefully we can have you guys hopefully, back. Hopefully, and I just want to make a shout out to my main man, Marco. <laughs> main man, Marco. There you go. Yeah. Well, Marco, you got a shout out right, right here on Good Night. Ladies and gentlemen. We'll be going to take a quick you. break. We'll be right back. Thank you, John. Thank you. You guys did great.